welcome to Canning with Nicole. Um, my first actual canning video is going to be making raspberry jam. So our recipe, I am following out of that ball book that I showed you guys was, I think, the first one that anybody should get. Um, and it's on page 31. So it is Beck and I went this morning and got um, a couple of different berries, the raspberries and the blackberries. So I'm going to start off with the raspberries. And we'll take a little pint of these over to the sink. Let's rinse them off. I can kind of just look through here, pick out any that look like they might be questionable. Dirty dishes in there. So I just take my little potato masher. Okay, so once I get um, my five cups of the mashed berries, I will bring you back and show you the next step. All right, so here's the rest of the five cups of the crushed berries. So according to the recipe, we are going to heat this up. And once it's warmed up, we'll add our pectin. And I'll show you, um, the recipe calls for a box of pectin, but I usually buy mine in bulk. And this tells you on the back that six tablespoons equals a box of pectin. So I'll measure out six tablespoons from here um, and put it in when it's warmed up. Um, and I was also going to show you over here in my um, canning pot that um, I am starting off with I think there's 12, a box of jars of the half pints because that's the um, size that the recipe calls for. And I have them in hot water. Right now it's pretty low. I'll bring it up to about a six and we'll get them nice and hot and they will sterilize in that water while I'm making the jam and getting it ready to put into the water bath. So we'll bring you back when I'm adding the pectin. Okay, so I'm going to measure out my six tablespoons of pectin. Two, three, four, five. Six, and there's a little bit more. I'm going to add just a Scosh more, just to be on the safe side. That's just about done. So we'll stir this up, get it up to boiling, and then we'll add our sugar. All right, so you can see that our raspberries are starting to boil up. So we want to start adding our sugar, and I'm going to go as fast as I can. We need seven cups, and you're supposed to do it all at once. Turn that down just a skosh. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So all of that is going to melt down and become liquid. Let's see here, it doesn't take very long. And then what we have to do is get this whole thing back up to boiling again. And then we'll set the timer for one minute. It has to be at a rolling boil for a full minute um, to activate that pectin that we put in there. So get that all nice and melted. You can see it's getting back to liquid again. All right, so we are getting to the point where um, it is boiling. Even after I stir it, it starts boiling right away. So I'm going to set the timer for one minute. You'll see there's a lot of foam around here. Um, that's pretty normal. Some people skim it off and throw it away. I'm going to set my timer here. 
Um, I don't do that. I actually will can it up. It has all the flavor. It's not harmful. It's not going to do anything to the jam. And I figure um, there's money, there's time. Why throw it away? So we're going to let this do its full boil for the minute. And we'll bring you back when it's done. All right. So the timer just went off. I'm going to turn this off. Um, now you'll see all the foam. I told you guys that's normal. Some people put a pat of butter in there um, to kind of keep the foam down. I turn that off now. Now I'm going to kind of bring my the jam back here and let it just set. And the reason I do that is it kind of cools off the jam a bit. And when I'm canning it, I'm hoping that these pieces of fruit are um, suspended in the jam a little bit better than... Um, sometimes they will separate and you'll see the big clump of all the fruit at the top and then the liquid jelly on the bottom, which is fine. It doesn't hurt anything, but obviously aesthetic, um, wise, it's not as pretty in the jar. Um, it's better to have it all throughout. So I'll let that cool for a few minutes and then I'll bring you back when we're jarring some of this up. All right. So I'll tell you guys a little canning trick when it comes to hard water. If you're on city water, it probably doesn't matter, but we have well water. And what well water does, it concentrates and leaves um, calcium on your jars. So if you add just a little bit of vinegar into your water, it'll keep that calcium from building up. Um, the other thing I do is add it to my pot of my lids that are warming up over here uh, because I'm later going to be using that water to um, clean the tops of my jars. Oh, I should not have put the lid on. If you can hear that noise, I apologize. That's our washing machine. Okay, so I'm gonna take the, you can see the water's hot in there. So I'm gonna take the water out and dump it. And I've recently become kind of obsessed, I don't know why, with making sure that my lids and my icons on my jars line up. I don't know why that matters now, but it does. So the first jar I'm gonna do, um, I'm just gonna ladle the foam off. So it, it really is not a very pretty jar when it gets done because it's mostly the foam and all that. But all the rest of the uh, jars look great. So I don't worry about that too much. And Becca and I have already tried this and we both agree that it's fantastic. It is on the sweet side and I know sometimes people don't like the thought of doing the jams and jellies because of so much sugar, but there are um, low sugar pectins that you can use where you can use very little sugar or even no sugar to make your jams and jellies, which is kind of nice um, because you get more of the fruit flavor with, with those. So with jams and jellies, it calls for a quarter inch of head space. And I'll show you here, well, it's kind of hard on here, but that little debubbling tool that I showed you in the other video, has the different measurements so you can take it to a quarter inch and set it on the edge of the rim and you just want that bottom to just barely touch and you can see that I'm there and I'll show you on the next um, jar where um, you can uh, tell by looking at it how how far you are so I'm just gonna take my vinegar water here And then take a lid and make sure those are lined up. Fingertip tight. You don't want to over tighten. Over tightening causes your jars to buckle. And then we'll just stick that right in there in the hot water and it can sit and wait while I finish with the other jars. And I'll show you the head space on this one if I can get it out. So you can see right here, this very top line, that's the quarter inch mark, that's the half inch mark, and then your one inch mark is this very bottom one. So when you're doing your canning, you can tell how far you need to fill it. So this, well that burner's still hot, it's still boiling. And there's just a little bit of foam in there, so I'm just gonna kinda let it get dispersed through um, the rest of my jars that I'm doing. All right, so all of our jars are filled. And as you can see, the recipe states that it should make about seven. 
of the um, eight ounce jars, but I actually have 10 in there. So 10 and a little bit extra that's already setting up nicely. It's nice and thick in there, so I think it's gonna turn out well. So I'll put the lid on, um, we'll get it to a rolling boil. And this recipe says that you should boil it for 10 minutes. And in my previous video, I talked about the elevation and how you need to adjust your time for that. So I need to add another five minutes. So I'm gonna be doing these for 15 minutes. So when it's boiling, I'll come and show you and then we'll set the timer. All right, so you can see that we are now boiling. Oh, well, maybe if I lift that a little bit, you can see. I'm starting to boil there. So I am gonna keep the lid on and I'm going to start my timer for 15 minutes. Um, as that gets to be a more vigorous roll, I, I'll kind of turn it down a little bit. Um, I can usually get it down to about three, sometimes four, um, up there on the stove. But I'll keep, I'll make sure that it stays at a rigorous boil uh, before I turn it down. We'll bring you back when it's all done. So the timer has gone off. It's been 15 minutes. Um, I'm going to shut this off. We don't want to touch the canner. We don't want to take the lid off. We're going to let it set for 10 minutes. And then... Um, after 10 minutes, I'll take the lid off, we'll wait another 10 minutes, and then we'll get to take the goods out of the canner. All right, so the lid has been off for 10 minutes. So here is that jar with the foam on the top and then the jelly on the bottom. Doesn't look very nice, but it's going to be delicious to eat regardless. And then there's that first jar of the jam. It's nicely dispersed, which is what I was hoping would happen. I don't always get that lucky for whatever reason, but it worked well today. So uh, I'll take these out. I'll set them on my um, little rack there and I'll let them cool for 24 hours. At 24 hours, I take the rings off and wash them with warm soapy water and put them on my racks over there, my shelves. All right, so there are my 12 jars of the raspberry jam. They turned out beautiful. Next video, I will show you how I'll be using one or maybe two, depends how big of a batch I do. Um, of the raspberry jelly. All right. Uh, please like, subscribe, and share. Thanks so much. Bye-bye.